A reading from the Book of Tobit. At night, I, Tobit, retired from burying the dead, washed myself, and went into my courtyard. And I slept by the wall of the courtyard, and my face was uncovered because of the heat. I did not know that there were sparrows on the wall. Their fresh droppings fell into my eyes and produced white films. I went to physicians to be healed, but the more they treated me with ointments, the more my vision was obscured by white films, until I became completely blind. At that time also my wife Anna earned money as a weaver. She used to send what she had to the owners and they would pay wages to her. One day, the seventh of distress, when, he, when she set off a piece she had woven and sent it to the owners, they paid her full wages and also gave her a young goat for a meal. When she returned to me, the goat began to bleat. So I called her and said, where did you get this goat? It is surely not stolen, is it? Return it to the owners, for we have no right to eat anything stolen. But she said to me, it was given to me as a gift in addition to my wages. But I did not believe her and told her to return it to the owners. I became flushed with anger for against her over this. Then she replied to me, where are your acts of charity? Where are your righteous deeds? These things are known about you. Then with much grief and anguish of heart, I wept and with groaning began to pray. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The hearts of the just are secure, trusting in the Lord. The hearts of the just are secure, trusting in the Lord. Happy are those who fear the Lord, who greatly delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land, and the generation of the upright will be blessed. The hearts of the just are secure, trusting in the Lord. They are not afraid of evil tidings. Their hearts are firm, secure in the Lord. Their hearts are steady. They will not be afraid. In the end, they will look in triumph on their foes. The hearts are just, are secure, trusting in the Lord. They have distributed freely. They have given to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their name is exalted in honor. The hearts of the just are secure, trusting in the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Some Pharisees and some Herodians were sent to Jesus to trap him in what he said. And they came to him and said, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with truth. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Should we pay them or should we not? knowing their hypocrisy. Jesus said to them, Why are you putting me to the test? Bring me a denarius and let me see it. And they brought one. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Jesus said to them, Give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and give to God the things that are God's. They were utterly amazed at him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Here we celebrate a, a rather interesting saint, and his life is fascinating. And if there's any movie producers watching, it would make an exciting movie. And he might seem a little far off since he lived around uh, 900 years ago but his culture was not too different from our own. He was a worker for the church uh, called a subdeacon, which is a higher position in the church, but not yet a deacon. And he likely took this on just for the benefits, for the money. And he likely paid for the position through a bribe. And yes, the history of the church is not pretty, uh, but of course you only have to look at uh, 
the Bible and see the history of the uh, people of God, and that's very similar. And St. Norbert did not live a, a Christian life by any, any means at the beginning of his life. He was actually a politician, and at one of his trips as a politician, he even strongly humiliated the Pope. Luckily, the Pope forgave him. Uh, but he was quite successful in the world's eyes. He was known for his wit and for his organization, and he was just a very good politician. And by God's grace, he was even offered up to be made bishop because of the corruption of the church at the time. I don't know why they picked somebody who wasn't rather a Christian at all to be a bishop, but again, by God's grace, he didn't accept this. Uh, and what a scourge to the world it might have been that it, he uh, would have accepted this and, of course, not gone on to change his life later. Uh, at least he knew his limits here. But uh, thanks be to God, what happened was that he actually got a sign from God. He was, he was literally struck by lightning on his way home. Of course, he takes this as a sign from God that being saved, he has to give his life to God. But like many people that go from one extreme to the other, from not practicing the faith at all to, to practicing it a lot, he, he's too much for people to handle. And people were not ready. He was strong. He said, reform the church. He, he knew himself how, how bad of a Christian he was. and So he wanted the priest to, to really practice the faith, to know the scriptures, and for the people to know this too. Let them follow the gospel he taught. And this led to the contempt of the, the priests, mostly, who thought that he was too strong. This even led to a local church council getting mad at him for his strongness. They claimed that he didn't listen to his superiors, the bishops. He preached too strongly against the clergy lives. He, he maligned them, and, and also they sort of attacked them, him from a canon law perspective. Why did he wear the wrong clothes? Why did he dress like a monk when he's not a monk. He's just trying to be a monk. He's not. He's a hypocrite. But it's beautiful because St. Norbert's life has changed. In humility, he obeys this local church council and is stripped of everything. He even gives up all his wealth except for uh, his uh, kit to say mass and a, and a few uh, months wages just to survive. But he actually it's given probably advice by someone at this local church council to go to go and see the Pope, to explain everything, to tell him your life story. And so he goes to the Pope uh, and asks uh, the Pope, he just wants the ability to preach, just to bring people to Christ. He knows of his past mistakes and, and everything else, but and the Pope actually vindicates him. And I can't get into the rest of his story, which again would probably make a good movie, but he changes all of Europe through a very dark time, which was very similar to us, where, where people have held the name but, but really don't practice the faith. And uh, you know, in, a, in some ways, you could sort of sum up his life as stumbling to the path of, of love through humble ways. As Pope Francis says, there's no humility without humiliation. Stumbling to the path of love through humble ways. And in our first reading, we, we see the great man Tobit, who out of fear of God, buries bodies that are left out to rot by the Greek Empire. And he puts himself in danger for God and, and for his law, despite the threats of the Greek government. But then he goes home and <laughs> he accuses his wife of something horrible. This very religious man uh, aligns his wife, and, and rightly his wife lambasts him for his hypocrisy. You say that you're a follower of God, but doing all these great things of burying all these bodies, and yet you come home and accuse me of stealing a goat. And he's humbled. But of course, this is good, just like it was for St. Norbert. Lightning. That council that St. That Norbert went to, where probably all the clerics there didn't have the best intentions in mind, were probably driven by, by greed and by jealousy. But nevertheless, humility is the path because we need to give God what is his. And that's what really the meaning of the gospel is today. Money is Caesar's, money is nothing, but give to God what is God's, our lives, all of it. Stumbling to the path of love of God and neighbor through humble ways. 
cut is the Catholic Christian walk.